In the skies over London, the pilots of an Airbus A319 are fighting an emergency situation that is getting worse by the minute. Both engines seem to be damaged, one is even on fire and leaking fuel. How did it come to this and will the pilots make it back to Heathrow, Europe's busiest airport? Find out with me today in this episode. Welcome to Airspace. On a rainy morning on May 24, 2013, the two pilots of British Airways Flight 762 were preparing for their first flight of the day. But before the flight could commence, it was the first officer's turn to inspect the aircraft. He did so and found nothing out of the ordinary, and soon the A319 was taxiing to the departure runway, runway 27 left. At 16 past 7, the aircraft took off into the rainy British sky. But already during their takeoff run, passengers observed something odd. The access doors of the engines seemed to be loose and flapping in the ever-increasing airstream around the aircraft. To their horror, these doors flipped up violently and were ripped from the hinges as the aircraft lifted its nose to leave the runway. Wires, tubes and connectors were now bare and visible to the amazed passengers. The departure of the engine cowling doors caused substantial damage to the aircraft, severing a fuel line, hydraulic lines and causing damage to the A319's wings and flaps. One access door even struck an emergency exit, which knocked off its cover inside the cabin. All this happened within a matter of seconds of lifting off the runway. First passengers started realizing that there was something pouring out of the engine and started to shout fire. Immediately, a cabin crew member tried to relay this information to the cockpit by calling the pilots over the interphone, which rang just as the pilots retracted the landing gear. Puzzled, the captain decided to ignore the call for now, as the aircraft was very close to the ground. In that phase, which is officially called a critical phase of flight, the flight crew usually focuses on flying the aircraft, handling cabin requests later. Little did they know that the information the cabin held would have been of great importance. But as the pilots climbed their A319 to the initial cleared altitude of 6000 feet, a first engine warning appeared. This warning related to an engine computer fault. Quickly, the pilots handled the associated checklist, when the first officer was the first to discover that something was amiss. He tried looking back at the wing through his window and could observe that the wing appeared to be damaged. Concerned, he told the captain that he believed something must have hit the wing. As he voiced his concern, it was underlined by another warning issued by the Airbus. The yellow hydraulic system, the one that is powered by the right engine, had failed too. All this information was enough for the crew to decide to return to Heathrow as soon as possible. In the meantime, the senior cabin crew member had made her way into the cabin to check the engines, as the passengers still seemed to be agitated. From where she was standing, she had a limited view of the engine, but she could clearly see that it was damaged. She called the flight tech again and this time, when the commander picked up, reported that the engine looked strange like it was blown open. The captain thanked her and asked for no further information. Another call by air traffic control allowed them to finally paint a picture of what had transpired. The controller radioed them. You've left multiple engine parts and there was smoke as you left the runway at Heathrow. The pilots confirmed this information and soon after, they were alerted by the A319's warning computers that there was now an imbalance in their fuel tanks. Quickly, they identified this imbalance as an actual fuel leak coming from the right engine. In the cabin, this was very obvious to the passengers, as they could see a streak of fuel pouring from the damaged engine. Officially, the procedure for a fuel leak originating from an engine calls for the shutdown of said engine. Nevertheless, the captain decided to leave it running for now. Finally, the pilots were able to line their aircraft up with running 27 right at Heathrow. But as they were about 10 miles from landing, the engine fire warning for the right engine activated, the one that had the fuel leak. Immediately and without confirmation from the first officer, the captain shut the engine down and deployed the fire extinguishing agents into the engine. But to no avail, the engine fire indication remained on. Highly concerned, the captain told the first officer that therefore they had no choice but to land no matter what. Finally, they succeeded and touched their damaged aircraft down. But the situation was far from over. During their landing roll, air traffic control informed the crew that there were still flames visible from the right engine and that the wind was coming from 20 degrees to the right of the runway orientation. This information was crucial for the captain, as he could now steer the aircraft slightly to the right at the end of the landing roll, so that the flames from the burning engine would now be blown away from the aircraft cabin. After the plane stopped, emergency services approached and attacked the fire. Immediately, the fire chief requested the crew to shut the remaining engine down, 
and told the crew to wait a short time for his assessment of the fire. Even though it seemed that the fire services were able to extinguish the fire quite quickly, the fire chief recommended to evacuate the aircraft. The captain heeded his suggestion and initiated an emergency evacuation that was completed in just over a minute, without notable injuries to passengers or crew members. Now, let's analyze how this accident happened. It seems immediately obvious that all the damage to the aircraft was caused by the engine cowling doors opening and being torn off the engines. But isn't it strange that all engine cowling doors opened on the left and right side? To understand the sequence of events involved here, we need to go back to the night before the accident, when the aircraft arrived from its final flight of the day. It arrived at stand 513 at Heathrow in the late evening hours. As soon as the pilots had shut the engines down, two mechanics got to work. They were to perform a daily and also weekly check package of the Airbus A319, which involved various small tasks such as checking all lights of the aircraft, tires and oil levels of the engines and its components. First, the mechanics wanted to check the oil levels of the integrated drive generator. This device is a combination of a mechanism that drives the generator at constant speed, and of an electric generator, which powers the aircraft and the engines are running. It is fitted on the side of the engine. To inspect its oil level, the technicians had to open the cowling doors of each engine. They did so as passengers were still deboarding the plane, without placing the required warning labels in the cockpit. Both mechanics found out that the integrated drive generators needed to be topped up with oil. The two were somewhat surprised, since this is not a very common finding. Since they did not expect the need for an oil top-up, they had not brought the respective oil filling gun along with them. So, they decided to close the access doors again for now, but they did not latch them. They thought that they would first complete all other items on their checklist, and then they would get the oil gun, open the access doors again and complete their task. After that, both technicians went to another aircraft at stand 517 to complete some tasks there, then they worked on an aircraft at stand 502, followed by an aircraft on stand 563. When their work there was done, they headed for the crew room for a break, during which one of the technicians tried to locate an oil gun in the nearby warehouse, but found none. He decided to go and look for it at another warehouse, while the other technician headed for the final aircraft of the day parked at stand 509. They agreed to meet there and drive to the aircraft with the open cowl doors last to eventually top up the oil of the integrated drive generators. The technician that went looking for the oil gun eventually found it, met his colleague at stand 509 and completed some work there as they had agreed. When they were done, they intended to drive to the aircraft with the open engine doors. But here a crucial mistake happened. They drove past the aircraft they were intended to service which was parked at stand 513 and drove to stand 517 instead, where another British Airways Airbus was parked. This one was an Airbus A321, not an Airbus A319, but the technicians didn't notice that when they approached it. When they tried to open the cowling doors again, they noticed that they were closed and latched. They thought that this was strange, but maybe somebody had closed the latches during their absence of about 3 hours. When they opened the service doors again, they found the engines had now cooled to ambient temperature and the oil readings now showed the correct oil level, not requiring any servicing. To the technicians, this seemed plausible since oil could have flown back into the reservoir as the engine cooled down. Satisfied, they closed the doors again and latched them properly and diligently verified each other's work. The cowling doors of this aircraft were now absolutely properly closed, while the doors of the aircraft they intended to service remained unlatched, four stands further to the north. The technicians returned to the break room, where they told some colleagues that they had found that someone had supposedly closed their cowling door latches for them. Nobody thought this strange in any way. Nobody, until the aircraft took to the skies in the following morning and received severe damage. This accident of this British Airways Airbus was by far not the first of its kind. Prior to this event, this had already happened to 34 other planes, and three further happened during the course of this investigation. Several measures have been taken over the years to mitigate the issue, such as painting the latches a bright orange or installing springs that push the cowling doors open by about an inch when they are not properly latched. None of these measures seemed to effectively reduce the likelihood of taking off with unlatched access doors. During the investigation, the committee asked the co-pilot who had performed the visual inspection of the aircraft if he had not seen that the latches had not been properly fastened. Apparently, he had not inspected them correctly. Inspecting these is somewhat tedious due to the low ground clearance of the engines. 
It requires the inspecting person to get down very low, possibly on hands and knees, something the first officer probably avoided in the rainy weather. He was unaware that he could also have looked for the one inch gap between the cowling doors and the engine to see that the doors were open. The tuck driver who inspected the aircraft prior to pushing it back for engine start also did not notice anything out of the ordinary. Investigators found that while he had over 40 years of experience, he had never been properly trained to spot such a maintenance lapse. Eventually, the investigators came to the conclusion that the first officer had not correctly performed the inspection of the aircraft as it is laid down in the documentation of the Airbus. Also, the technicians who had worked on the aircraft had not performed their tasks according with their maintenance manual, which would have had several safeguards against such an incident. For example, this manual states that warning labels should have been placed in the cockpit before opening the engines. Had the technicians done this, the pilots would have noticed these the following morning after the mechanics had serviced the wrong aircraft. The actual instruction in the manual to open the cowling doors also has a very specific warning box. Caution, do not leave this job after just closing the fan cowls. Continue on to secure the latches. If you are called away prior to latching, then either reopen one cowl door or latch the latches before walking away from this engine. Time pressure and fatigue were also a big factor in this incident, as the board reports. The technicians were working on high load and were used to frequent understaffing and overtime. A side note also criticized the captain for some of his actions, most notably the fact that he shut down an engine without confirmation from his first officer. While the crew brought the aircraft and its occupants safely back to the ground, this action was potentially dangerous. Yes, he shut down the correct engine, but doing so without a second pair of eyes, confirming that one is not shutting down the last remaining and running engine, is unusual and against procedures and good airmanship. The final report on this matter was completed in 2015. During my research, I found other instances of A320 family aircraft dropping their engine cowling doors in 2015, 16, 17 and 18. In 2018, Airbus finally started offering new cowling door latches that feature a key with a long red lanyard. It must be inserted to open the cowling door latches and can only be removed if the door is properly closed. Pilots must verify the presence of the key in the cockpit before the flight. Also, newer A320 family models such as the A320neo feature a physical flag on the engine if the cowling doors are not closed and the sensor also monitors the state of the doors in the cockpit. May we hope that these measures are finally enough to prevent further accidents. So, what do you think? What was the greatest factor in this accident? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing for more interesting aviation content. See you all in the next one.